So, it now falls to me to introduce our first speaker, uh, traditionally the opening talk of ApacheCon. Uh, to those of you who've had anything at all to do with the Apache Software Foundation, uh, Jim Jagielski or Jim Jag should need no introduction. Uh, so all I really need to say is please welcome the president of the Apache Software Foundation to talk about the state of the feather, Jim Jagielski. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing this morning? Good. How many people, it's going to be hard to see, but how many people, is this your first Apache Con? Just raise your hand. That's fantastic. That's great. Very cool. So um, as Steve said, uh, there are a ton of sessions out there with a whole bunch of different content. Uh, you'll meet people who actually develop the code, write the code, uh, agonize over the code. So be sure to get the most out of it. Um, what I'd like to do for the next half an hour or so is just give what we call the traditional state of the feather talk. This is basically a, a short summary of the ASF and the, uh, what's been going on the last year or so within the ASF. Um, I'm using the word ASF, it stands for the Apache Software Foundation. Some people just call, call us Apache, which is fine. Before there was the ASF, there was this, uh, this uh, group of, uh, uh, of people called the Apache Group. Um, and basically the idea behind that is these were people who uh, needed a working web server, uh, mostly because their livelihoods depended on it. So at the very, very beginning, you can see that the ASF was all about not only the, um, uh, the sharing of code, the sharing of technology, but also the very fact that technology impacted people's lives, people's livelihood, their jobs depended on it. And that's one of the reasons why the Apache license is written the way that it is. Okay. It wasn't until like about 1999 or so when IBM was uh, looking at uh, using uh, the Apache web server for their web server technology that we actually became incorporated as the Apache Software Foundation. Now I think what's important and what's unique in the ASF is that it's 100% membership based. Um, we, we do have sponsors, but they don't control the policy or the direction of the code of the foundation of projects. It really is 100% controlled by the membership within the ASF, which I think is very, very uh, unique. Uh, some of the particulars of the ASF, it is a nonprofit corporation, so everything we do basically has to revolve around the public good. We're developing code because it, it, people need it, people depend on it, and it's a charity that we're providing to those people out there. Uh, for people who are interested in uh, donating uh, financial resources to the ASF, it's called a 501c3, which means it's, it's tax-exempt. As I said before, it is a volunteer organization. We don't pay anyone to work on the actual code itself. So no one who is working here at the, uh, who is at the ASF, is an ASF member, is an ASF contributor, gets a paycheck from the ASF for developing code out there. It is a very, very uh, wide-ranging organization. We have people worldwide, and you'll see that, especially when, uh, when Nick talks about his uh, Apache Wade talk, you'll see how that really impacts the uh, development mantra of the ASF and why we uh, focus on things like mailing lists and stuff like that. Also, what I think is unique within the ASF is that the foundation exists to be very, very lightweight. We're there basically to allow the uh, coders, the programmers, the developers to do what they want to do, but not have to worry about things like infrastructure, wiki, uh, uh, legal aspects, and stuff like that. So we're there to basically provide the, the, uh, the resources to do your work without being uh, controlling or managing of those resources. Now, back at the very beginning, there were only about 21 members or so, and we basically had two main projects, the Apache web server and ConCom itself, and everything was donated. We didn't own anything. We didn't own any of the servers. We didn't have the, uh, the, uh, the co-location facilities. Uh, everything was donated by other people. Nowadays, uh, we have over 430 members. These are actual 
uh, you know, members of the Apache Software Foundation, uh, 59 uh, people who had been members and had decided to, uh, to go on and do other things and didn't want to uh, you know, follow the, the, the motion of the ASF and do things like voting and stuff like that. And over 100 top-level projects, and these are the, uh, uh, the projects and the committees that you think about. Tomcat is a TLP, Hadoop is a T, uh, T, uh, TLP, uh, Lucene, stuff like that. We also have a mechanism for new projects to enter in to the ASF, which is called the Incubator Project. And right now we have about 40 or so projects which are in this incubation stage with the idea and the understanding that the vast majority of those will come up and become top-level projects. We also have a, a thing called a labs area, which is designed to basically be sort of like a sandbox facility for developers out there. And there are some projects in which their job is done. There's no more active development being done on it, and these go into the attic. And in the background, you kind of like see a, a, a small a picture of what our infrastructure looks like now. So as I said before, the ASF's mission is basically to provide software for the public good out there and provide that foundation out there, okay? Now, if you go to any company, they always have this vision statement. You know, this is what we're here to do. This is why we exist. And if you want to be pedantic, this is kind of like what our mission statement is within the ASF. That's very, very wordy. You can actually boil it down to two main ideas. First of all, community created code. You'll see this, uh, you know, uh, this phrase a lot in a lot of uh, places, a lot of write-ups and stuff like that. It really makes uh, people assured to know that the ASF is about the community aspects of code, okay? There is a real uh, restriction on people who are poisonous. Uh, the idea is that what you need to develop is a healthy community around the code, and the code itself will, will become very, very good, very healthy, very viable out there. And that's what the second point is, is that not only should the community be great, but the code should be great as well. Now, it is basically membership-based, individuals only, people are... Uh, voted in and get merit basically based on themselves, not who they work for, not for how long they've been working on the project, but basically what they do. It's basically a meritocracy. It's another word you hear a lot out there. And the members nominate new members that are coming on board. We try to do this at least once a year. Um, in fact, our bylaws say you have to have a, a members meeting every year. We have been trying to do it uh, you know, twice a year, but fell you know, away this year. This is kind of like the org chart of what the ASF is, and there's basically two tiers to it. On the left-hand side, you'll see what people mostly think of the ASF, which are the projects out there. And you can see that that's the team, that's the tier responsible for the technical oversight of the projects. These are the people who are doing the actual code development, figuring out the direction that the code should go to and things like that. At the very, very top level, for lack of a better term, are the PMC members. And these are the people who actually have binding votes on what patches go into the code base, uh, when releases are, are put out and things like that. And there's a larger group of people called the committers. And these are people with commit access to the code. These are people who are actually able to physically touch the code that's in our, our repository. Um, and the natural process is that committers become PMC members because as they prove in themselves, as they create merit about themselves, they become able to have this binding vote on side there. And then finally, there's contributors, patchers, and users, and stuff like that. That's all the development committee. Uh, for, because we are a legal entity, because we are a, a corporation and a nonprofit entity, there are some uh, legal aspects that we need to worry about as well. And this is the, the, the organizational oversight, the stuff on the right-hand side. And these are the, the members, the people who are actually voted in as members of the ASF, uh, the officers of the ASF. Every top-level project has a, a chair position. And this person basically serves as the eyes and ears on the board. Their main function is basically to send a quarterly report to the board saying, this is how the project's doing. This is how many new uh, committers we have. Uh, these are the releases we've done. Um, are there any legal issues and things like that? You notice it doesn't focus at all on the development aspects of it. It doesn't ask the board for, okay, we're thinking about adding this feature, is that okay? That control is 100% on, uh, on the communities out there. And finally, the board, uh, the nine member board, is there to basically ensure that the legal aspects of the foundation run. Now, even though we've been around for a long period of time, 
policy is still firmly in the hands of the individuals out there. We have really restricted and, and, and held back against things like executive directors and things like that for the fear that that person's vision may not match all of our vision out there. And so by making sure that the, the board and the, uh, the, the membership are 100% individuals, it ensures that we keep control of our own destiny out there. Now we do, unfortunately, or fortunately, have the ability to have outsourced help. Now, as you can tell by that slide a while ago, our infrastructure is huge. It's very, very complex. We're supporting over 100 top-level projects. There's a lot of bits and pieces inside there. And so we have an excellent infrastructure team who is focused and dedicated on keeping that up and running out there. Now, we have three full-time uh, you know, sysadmins who are doing a great job in, in, in doing that. We also have uh, a part-time executive assistant, Melissa, who helps out with the, uh, with the minutia of running such a large, large organization. And without this outsourced help, we really wouldn't be able to do the kind of stuff we're doing. But again, the focus is that that's on the infrastructure part. It doesn't leak over into the development part. So basically, the board and the infrastructure exists, so projects don't need to worry about it, okay? The board runs the foundation, but the projects run the codes themselves. Now, over the last year, we've seen a lot of activity. And in general, the PMCs are very, very healthy. I mean, we're seeing a lot of new releases, a lot of new developers, a lot of interest in the code, both internal to the ASF, but also more importantly, external to the ASF out there. There are a lot of people who really want to play with the fun stuff that we develop out there. And not only do people want to play with it and develop it, there are large scale enterprises who want to use it, who are depending on it. And that's really something which is it's a true feather in our cap out there. We also have new podlings being added. These are projects which, um, like what the ASF is doing, like how we manage uh, communities, like how we, you know, the, the methods that we have for developing projects out there, and they want to become part of our family. CloudStack is most probably the, the best example of that within the last month, I mean the last year, of a really cool podling who wanted to come into the ASF. And now we also have projects which are graduating from the incubator to top level projects. And open office is a great example of that as well. Um, and also, the ASF continues to be recognized both within the open source community as well as external as a free and open source software leader. You know, despite the fact that we don't try to market ourselves as that. You know, the message, the, the reason why we were being as, as, uh, as looked up to is simply because of the results of every contributor, every member, every developer who's working on the ASF code. And that's really the, the, the real proof. Now, we did have a, a membership meeting uh, a few months ago and added 49 new members, which I think is most probably the, the largest group that we've ever uh, elected in inside there. We do have a, a new board. Uh, nine people, and you'll see the list of people uh, all the way up there. Uh, over the last month, you can see just the number of top-level projects which have either, uh, which have graduated from the, um, uh, the incubator or have spun off into other projects out there. It's just in the last 12 months, that's what, what two, maybe three or so a, a month of, uh, of, of projects, you know, coming on board. Uh, we had, uh, you know, a budget that we, uh, you know, are, are holding to. In fact, uh, for any you know, uh, PMC people out there, I'll be calling for a budget call most probably in, in the next of the week. Uh, we had a, a part-time system minute who uh, we uh, were able to uh, bring up to full-time status. Um, also, what's important is that uh, the number of projects and incubator products which are using Git has really significantly increased. You'll see that a lot now. And despite uh, claims to the contrary, the world did not end with the Git experiment, which is really, really fantastic. So if you ever hear any FUD about you know, the ASF doesn't allow Git, that it's subversion only, that's, don't even worry about that. We do have some, uh, some new officers on, on board. Uh, those are the list out there. Um, Doug is the, uh, the chairman and I'm the president. You'll see uh, the other officers up there as well. We also ensure that all legal protection required by projects is, is available. As I said before, the ASF is really, really producing software that is used by a large variety of commercial entities out there. They wouldn't be doing it if we were um, you know, kind of lacking in doing the kind of protection that we wanted to, that they weren't able to follow the IP protection and stuff like that. 
We need to also protect the brands and the trademarks, okay? Now, we've been doing this for 14 years, and it's a long time, okay? So we must be doing something right. Now, certainly we're not perfect. You know, we do have this focus on, on community, which is great, but I certainly think we can do a lot better. You know, just, it, it, it's obvious looking out over the, the crowd that we have uh, problems shared with a lot of open source communities out there regarding uh, diversity, especially gender-based. And I think that's something that the ASF can really be a true leader in showing the open source community the way to do that. Especially with a community and an organization which is based on merit, which is supposedly blind to everything else, I think we need to be able to do a better job as far as that. The other thing is we don't claim to be the, the, the right solution for every project out there. In the same way that we don't claim the Apache license to be the best license for all software out there, okay? We just happen to have a method, a methodology that has been shown to, to work for us, okay? It may not work for you. Chances are it will if you give it a try. Now, this whole methodology is something that we call the Apache way, and there really is um, something which has grown up over the, uh, the last 14 years, you know, and it really was based on the idea that individuals are important, merit is important, and healthy communities. And, and Nick Burkich is actually doing a talk uh, right after the, uh, the keynotes this morning about the Apache Way. And I really encourage people that if you have any kind of interest or curiosity about exactly what that Apache Way is, please go into it, okay, and watch it. Uh, finally, I'd like to go and thank all of our sponsors. These are the actual ASF sponsors. In addition to ApacheCon having sponsors, uh, these, these are people who basically uh, provide uh, funds to the ASF, no strings attached. You guys know what to do with it. We, we value what your entity does. Please, hold on. Yeah, that's, yeah, I just forgot. We just brought in Intel as a brand new platinum sponsor basically just earlier this week. So in addition, yeah. <laughs> So in addition to such luminaries as Citrix and Facebook and Google, we have people like Intel. Again, this is another sign of the kind of, uh, of trust and reputation that the ASF is able to enjoy in those sort of organizations. And also in keeping with our sort of like, you know, behind the scenes things, we don't even go out there and encourage people to, people come to us. You know, I mean, that, it's, 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 it's part of our DNA, you know, as much as, you know, people think that, you know, uh, you know, ASF people enjoy being up on stage. We really don't. We enjoy the message. We don't enjoy the experience, per se. But the reason why we do it is because we really like what's going on with the ASF. You know, we always let our, our, our code and our documentation and stuff like that speak for us. So, again, thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you for the trust they've, in, they've invested with us. I'd like to provide a tip of the hat to other people who have, who have helped us out with codification facilities and software and servers and things like that. And finally, a big thank you to, to everyone who uses, touches, commits any ASF code. Chances are very good everyone is doing it. The ASF Apache code is pervasive in the marketplace out there, okay? And again, community-created code isn't a slogan. It really isn't. It really is the way we operate. It is part of our core DNA, okay? And when you think about open source, when you think about free software, that really needs to be the core aspect. It certainly is, is, is fundamental to us, is that we are all in this together, we are all based on our individuality, and that's what's important to all of us. So finally, uh, I'd like to you know, close off. If there are any problems at all, please let someone know. We want this to be a fun, friendly, safe, absolutely invigorating uh, experience. So if anything, uh, you know, if you have any problems or issues or concerns or questions, please contact anyone, okay? Provide feedback for speakers. It's very, very important, okay? Getting that kind of you know, feedback loop is crucially important when developing code. Okay, that's the reason why you want users and developers to communicate drastically because the code will get better when you get that feedback loop from the users. Same thing with speakers, okay? Any suggestions at all, please follow them back. There are a ton of events, birds of feathers, lightning talks, and stuff like that. Attend them, ask questions, make friends, and enjoy the conference. Thank you.